So I went from 16.7 to 18.9 grams. I'll just run another one. And 22.2 grams of coffee. Now I've got a 1.3 gram variable. Come with me and I'm gonna show you why you can't trust your coffee grinder if you're chasing consistency, whether at home or in a cafe. I've got an M from SB2 here. It's a great commercial grinder, but I know that if I'm in a cafe and I'm pumping out coffee and I start putting shots on, if I was filling up a porta filter or a group handle and I don't weigh my shot, whether using a dosing pot or I'm even tearing my porta filter, I can't tell you that every coffee is gonna have the same dose. And then once I start seeing different extractions or different shot times, and I start getting different flavors, how am I to know that my dose isn't having the impact on that? So first one, 21.6 grams of coffee. Let's go again. Make sure that's on zero. Let's take that off. Twenty two point nine grams of coffee. Two grams of coffee. Now I've got a one point three gram variable on there. Now my recipe is really important to me. We develop our recipes to suit the coffee that we're using and we want it to taste the same for every customer that drinks our coffee. We also want our customers using our coffee to taste the same, which is why we develop recipes. We teach our customers that. We teach you how to use them at home so you know how to get the best out of their coffee. Now, if you're not following a recipe, like using the same dose every single time, you're missing the opportunity of replicating the same flavor that we know it should be. So a 1.3 gram variable is massive. A one gram variable on our 22.5 gram recipe is actually a 4.5% difference. So that 1.3 gram variable is way too much for me. It's gonna to have too much of an impact on the flavor and consistency of my coffees. So let's check out the Mazzaconi and see how it holds up on consistency shot to shot. Twenty point two grams. Let's go again. Now this is a seven point three five second grind time. Obviously we're just grinding the same amount of time every shot. Twenty one point five grams. Again, there's my one point three gram variable. And again. Twenty one point twenty one grams. All right, so clearly again, we're getting changes on this grinder as well. This is not to say that these grinders are the issues. They all are. Every grinder that I've ever used will have variables, even the best grinders. Unless you're really looking at spending the major bucks on a grind by weight grinder, which are very popular these days because they are onto it. They know that they want to get consistency in every single cup. So again, that's just a demonstration of why it's important to weigh your shots. Now, if you're at home and you might have a grinder similar to this, a domestic little grinder, I can tear off my handle and I can grind in the 10 seconds that this grinder is set up for. Cool, 16.1. Grams. This is an 18 gram basket, so a little bit smaller. Obviously, I'm not focusing on recipes because that's, we're just focusing on dose and consistency. Seventeen grams. Oh, I'm leaning on the bench making it fluctuate.
16.7. So I get a 0.9 variation in my, in my dose there. Again, whether you're at home or a cafe, it's still important to measure your dose. It's gonna impact the flavor of your coffee. Now, one thing that people are constantly doing to improve the flavor of their coffee can also be the thing that's really impacting their dose, and that is your grind change. If you're not measuring your dose, you not, might not realize how much of an impact on your dose your grind change is making. For example, the simple way to put it is if your burrs are closer together in the 10 seconds it takes to grind this, this coffee through, if they're close together, less coffee will get through. As you go coarser, you allow more coffee to go through the burrs and that therefore gives you more dose. If you're not measuring your dose and you're changing your grind, you've now got two variables that you're trying to manage and that's far harder for you to create consistency. So let me demonstrate that to you. On this grinder, I'm gonna go just slightly coarser. And we'll always grind off. Sorry, <laughs> had, to, had to top up the beans because it's always best to have a, a much fuller hopper when you're grinding. Now, so let's, I've made that grind change. I've cleared out any of the grind retention. Now, if you are making grind changes and playing with things, you do always want to clear, clear out at least one head between testing because you need to clear out the retention from that grinder. So let's now see how much of an impact our dose this has had, that grind change has had on our dose. Cool, 18.9 grams. So I went from 16.7 to 18.9 grams. I'll just run another one, just to be sure. Oh, now it's overflowing. So clearly there's, there's, co there's coffee left over there. If I had an 18 gram recipe for my 18 gram basket, I'm now at 22.6 grams. I just, I'm, that's four grams over the last ones. I'm 20.6. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that 20.6 grams is way over recipe. It's actually four grams difference since I made that grind change. And this is the example I'm trying to show you. If you're not weighing your dose and keeping that consistent and then changing your grind, you've got two variables working against each other and you can never be consistent. Okay, so what I want you to take away from this video is that you can't trust grinders. If you're weighing into your handles, you're gonna get an inconsistent dose every single time, pretty well. So if you are considering weighing your dose, it's something that we've implemented easily into high volume cafes. And it's something that is creating consistency from cup to cup, from barista to barista. And if you're a business owner, you're also aware of wastage. So if your recipe is 20 grams and your baristas are constantly weighing over your recipe, you're losing money. So let's make sure that we're not wasting coffee. We're always on recipe. We're always producing great tasting coffee, cup to cup, at home, in cafes, all day long. So if you have any more feedback, if you're doing this already, if you're not doing it, do the exercise weigh your handles, measure your dose, do, do a bunch of them and tell me in the comments below how big a variable you've got and if you're gonna start implementing weighing your dose. So put them in the comments below, ask me any questions, I'll get back to you. Hit the like button and the subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Cheers.